Shut up and sit down. Hello YouTube, welcome to my channel, thank you for watching. I am the Cyber Eve Guru, and I am going to actually depart from uh, my uh, more recent uh, 3D printing videos and have a conversation here, uh, do a quick video about uh, CAD and CAM. Uh, more specifically CAM, uh, computer aided manufacturing, than the CAD part, but they kind of go hand in hand. So I um, just want to show you kind of 101 on the different cuts that you can make using a CNC, a computer or numeric controlled um, machine. So I have a Shape Oco 2 that has been upgraded to uh, an X-Carve. Um, so a pretty pretty good machine. It's given me great results and I just want to show you some of the things you can do with it. So right off the bat I just want to show you uh, this guy here. This is a um, it's an S obviously uh, that I cut out uh, using the uh, Shape Oco using what is known as a profile operation which is uh, you run the bit around the outside um, of your part and creates this profile. Now this S actually fits into a pocket uh, that I created and I'm do it right here just like this. Um, oops, you can see here the pocket is this part, I'm sorry, this part over here um, where you route out all the material um, and create this indentation into the part. So now um, uh, CNC is called a subtractive uh, manufacturing technique where you're removing material um, versus 3D printing, which is an additive manufacturing, which is where you're building up material. So this S um, is designed to go into the pocket and create, uh, let's see if I can get that snap there, so just like that, um, and creating an inlay. Um, and so this was the very first time I'd ever done a pocket um, and a profile to make an inlay. Um, I've been doing a lot of pocketing and profiling, um, but never put the two together. Uh, so you can see there's actually a, a fair bit of a, a gap between the profile um, here and the inlay, so it's not what you want. So I did some uh, investigating, figured out what was wrong. Basically the machine's uh, belts were too loose and uh, whatnot, so we tightened it up and we got it going. Um, on the other side of this board here, so some tests that I've been running on the um, this, what is known as V carving or V engraving uh, using a V bit. Um, let me show you here. A V bit looks like this. Um, uh, it literally has a V. Let's see, uh, it literally has a V on the top, so you can uh, get down and do some fine detail parting, um, as opposed to the other uh, end mill here, which is a, a flat end mill. Um, you can see how it's flat on top. Get the camera to focus, maybe. That would be fantastic. Uh, anyway, uh, so it's flat on top. This is a two flute uh, quarter inch uh, flat end mill, which is what I actually use for um, making a lot of the profiles. It removes a lot of material very quickly. So um, the V carving here is this is also, <laughs> ironically, the very first time I did the V carving. And you can see um, different, it was cut at different depths. Um, although I was, the machine was set up to cut at the same depth. I was using different bits, um, and it, it brought it out at different depths, and I finally figured that out. It was actually a, a mistake that I had made in Fusion um, when I set up the, the part here. Um, so I just want to show you real quick some things that you can do. So now that you understand the pockets and the profiles, right, those are the two basic operations you can do. Um, some different softwares have different ways of calling things, but at the end of the day, it's either a pocket or a profile. It's either an inside or an outside. Um, so in this case, with the S, this is an outside profile because you're cutting on the outside. Um, theoretically speaking, you could do an inside profile on this guy and it would just create the line. Um, it wouldn't remove all the material. It's called a pocket because it's removing all of the material. Um, so a bore, which is creating a, a hole, um, is really just a, a form of, of pocketing and profiling together. Um, and then there's also with professional CNC machines, you can do threads and things like this. So um, <clears throat> the shape of go, I suppose, you could probably sign up to do that. I never tried, but um, that's kind of an advanced feature. Uh, so this is a sign I made for my, my lovely son. Um, it's a quote from Ron Swanson for anyone who happens to be a um, uh, Parks and Rec fan. Um, I'm trying to get the camera to focus, it's not, but um, what you see here is a V uh, V graving here. Um, I did the uh, outside profile here using the quarter inch end mill. And then I, once I uh, did the V engraving and did the profile, 
did a quick sand layer um, using uh, 60 grit uh, to kind of knock down uh, some of the thickness here. Um, the, the, the parts that were left, um, I sealed it, let it dry for um, a day or half a day or whatever it was, and then I painted it with some black, uh, in this case gray, uh, acrylic uh, craft paint, um, and then I sanded the paint away, um, and then uh, sealed it with polyurethane, I think it turned out very well. A um, couple other uh, things that I've done, <clears throat> in this case, um, these were the same uh, similar designs, I should say, not identical. I, I tweaked some of it, um, but this is a kind of a great example, again, of the pocketing and the profiling. Um, so uh, the inlay here is a walnut on a, on a maple base with some cherry petals of the flowers here. So this is actually sealed with polyurethane as well. It's meant to be um, used as a, you know, sit, uh, we use it, put pictures on it and whatnot, um, kind of like a, uh, uh, what do we call them, a trivet. Um, it's made out of wood. Um, and then the exact same uh, uh, kind of design on a different base. This is a Pele. Uh, the, the base wood here, it actually, you can't smell it because we don't have smell vision, but it actually smells like carrots. It's an amazing wood. Um, and I love the grain of it. Uh, with uh, Purple Heart is the, is the um, kind of stem here. And then the cherry again is the petals. Um, so you can see the completely... Uh, different looks here of the two parts, although they are the same design with different base materials and different uh, um, uh, materials, uh, uh, woods you can use for this. Um, so I use a lot of uh, cherry, purple heart. I like the maple bases. They're they're super heavy and solid. Um, the Sapele here, I got a really good deal on it. It's actually, um, what is it? It was 5'4", uh, which is um, 5 fourths of an inch, <laughs> uh, which is 1.25 uh, inches thick. Um, which is uh, thicker than the maple you can see here. Um, yeah, so. um, these are just some examples. You can see I did a circle here, routed it out with that quarter inch bit, and then the, um, in this case I just did a, a rounded edge square for the Sapele. Uh, and sand it down again, 60 grit, um, followed by 120, 220, and then 320. Um, in this case, I sealed it with polyurethane. In this case, I just put some beeswax on it. This was meant to be a cutting board. Um, Although uh, uh, the, my significant other, whom I made this for, doesn't want to cut anything on it <laughs> to destroy the inlay. Um, so we just, again, basically use it as a fancy trivet. Um, so there you go. So that's kind of uh, CAM, CAD 101, uh, showing you the different cuts you can make. Um, probably going to do a couple more videos on this, actually showing the technique inside of Fusion so you can kind of get a feel for what that's like. Um, but this is the what I'll call the opposite side of 3D printing, uh, which would be CNC. Um, so uh, if there are any questions, uh, please leave them below. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, please subscribe. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you don't like it, as always, thumbs up anyway, and uh, we will see you soon. Thank you.